As you may or may not know, one of my dreams in life is to become a film director. One of the things you need is a good computer to be able to manage all your films on and edit them. I've been working with Convy Productions for years and I help with the computers on and off and we are finally updating our system and I wanted to share that with you. There's a lot that goes into making a film. We have to have a system that stores it all. This is such an intense box. Gorgeous. The new Mac Pro server rack comes with keyboard, mouse, instructions, and some really nice slides. My good friend Weston was kind enough to let me pick his brain as we put this new system together. I'm Weston Childers, I'm the owner of Convy Productions, a film production company out of Salt Lake City. And our film production company, we have a YouTube channel, and we don't really do tech reviews or equipment reviews. Um, but we still love sharing knowledge and sharing our learnings with other people. So Jason, our assistant director, was like, hey, why don't we do a review of the new Mac Pro with server rack edition. Apple, Apple man manufacturers it. What are you talking about? <laughs> well, probably the best way is you get one side. Okay. So Jason has a few questions they want to ask me about how we used it, why we went for a Mac Pro versus our other systems, which are Hackintosh. What are the benefits? What are the cons to it? We had the price that everybody wants to know about. And why did we go for the rack mount version versus the desktop version. So gorgeous inside. Apple does so well at designing the inside of their Macs. There's like nothing in there. It's all just itty bitty teeny weeny electronics on a very ginormous motherboard. <laughs> and no cables. And no cables. So we got the 12 core processor on ours. We kept the RAM at 32 gigabytes right out of the gate, and then we bought an extra 64. We upgraded to the, the Radeon Pro Vega 2, and then one terabyte. And that's all we did. Okay. Okay. So it's finicky when you try to get it in. Yeah, it's it like, seems like it kind of has a groove. Just a little bit. You have to kind of press on either side. There we go. Ready? Ah. Okay. Well, technically we can boot it up. So far it. with this guy, it's we, we need to kind of finish up some tests, but it's looking like it's about double the speed of what our 1080 Ti in, which is pretty amazing. And it's not actually a more powerful graphics card. So that really comes to show how much Apple put into the software or the firmware part of designing the graphics card to where it's getting a whole lot more power out of it than we definitely could with a hacked 1080 Ti. So pretty impressive. So speed test of the internal hard drive, it's pretty stinking fast. I just wanna hear it go. <laughs> so we have the one terabyte version, which is I believe two 512 NVMEs uh, rated together in zero. And so that's why we're getting 3,000 megabytes per second. That's wonderful. So that's pretty stinking good. So this is the 8K 3 to 1 compression ratio. Um, this is running off our single uh, Pro Vega 2 32 gigabyte module. And for us, sufficient that we could run off our graphics cards up to four streams, you know, 24 frames per second. And what's nice is that when you have this on a rack, you can still easily get access to these guys. You just pull these tabs down and there you go. And then Inside you work the underneath bottom. it like a car. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, Bump up the ISO. You see it okay? Yeah, now I can. And then just like the other one, these guys come off. And then that's how we have our RAM clusters. These are two of the original sticks. And then we just added on um, two 32 gigabyte modules on each side. Um, and then we still have six 
other RAM slots open to where if we need more memory, which for right now, most of the editing programs that we work in don't really need that much extra memory, so it's not really worth it for us right now. Yeah, we're video editing, we're not graphics. Yeah, we're not doing major 3D stuff, but we'll see. What's nice is that we can do that if we, we can. want it. <laughs> yeah. And this part is designed pretty well. Um, we haven't had a problem sticking this one back in. You just push it back on and there we go. So one thing that we really like about actually the server version is it gives you this extra space here. Um, and so we're actually kind of devising some air filtration to go in here. We have our Dimitri Resolve Studio dongle in the inside USB port, nice way to clean it up. And then we only, on the outside, we just have to plug in our monitor and our ethernet cord yeah. and then, uh, then a USB that we run up to the, we've just got a USB extension cord that we run up there. So we only have two connections here that have to actually go out to the monitor and then we just have the one ethernet cable that patches it through to the rest of the cluster. And that's how our setup is. When, when Weston first started Comvi, we started with a Hackintosh and then we transferred to a trash can or what do you call that one normally? It's the other Mac Pro that before this one. And it worked okay. There were just a lot of um, issues with trying to get all the software to work properly. And eventually um, we went back to a Hackintosh. When Apple finally came out with this new Mac Pro, we were really excited because it solved a lot of the different problems that we were struggling with with our Hackintosh. Like it worked really well, but there's because of new updates and things, it's starting to is starting to show its hackiness. Hackiness, <laughs> that's right, that's right. I mean, I guess it's quiet. I can't tell you because everything else is louder than it ever could be, so. That's right. we, we had to turn off the X serve because it was so stinking loud. <laughs> we'll have to talk about that. Oh yeah, that's true. Like the whole system. The X serve was like a 10 year old computer we were doing some research on and it's designed for big server racks. So it's designed to run at high speeds. <laughs> 10 years later, actually works great for what we what we need for it. Yeah. Cool, the X serve, we actually got this uh, on eBay for a hundred bucks. Um, and it used to be, this model used to be $13,000 new from Apple, but that was 10 years ago. Yeah. Um, we needed a place to store our databases for DaVinci Resolve. Um, and we had put on our Mac Mini, but it just, it was just a little too slow. And so we we're like, okay, if we could get something that was a little faster, we'd need to go for one of the newer Mac Minis, which is a thousand bucks. And it was like, well, we could also retro get this guy to work for under a thousand bucks. So we put um, NVMe drives into it and kind of redid everything to where now we've got $600 invested into it and it's much faster than we could get out of a Mac Mini, one of the new ones. And so now we host our databases on this. So then our computer will talk, it pulls data off of here. So you open up a project that pulls the project off of here through um, DaVinci Resolve database. And then it pulls the data of the actual video footage from here. And then it runs it off either our computer here or our computer here. And then we actually are in the process of selling this guy and we will end up purchasing a second one of the Mac, um, Mac racks because it works how we want it. Definitely comment below on your thoughts on the Mac Pro and uh, what were some of the things? Oh yeah, one of the main things is, are you guys having any trouble with opening and closing the top or are, is that just us? I think that's about the only thing. Um, welcome for any comments, any questions. If you want more videos like this one, where you want to dive, want us to dive deeper in the system and uh, any questions on that, let, let me know.